Hello guys, Kim Shizer here, bringing you another Elden Ring build. And this one going to be a Strength Arcane tank build. Playing a tank can be a great idea for those of you who enjoy playing the game with your friends, maintaining a constant aggro of nearby enemies while keeping your group safe. And because of how easy and powerful this build can be, it is equally ideal for new players struggling to overcome some of the challenging encounters in Elden Ring. Before we start, I want to thank you guys for your amazing support. I am grateful for your ideas and your constructive feedback, and equally grateful to anyone who took some of their time to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for your feedback and support. Without any further delay, let's jump right in. The most important piece of equipment in any tank build is the shield. There are different types of shield in the game, like small, medium, and great shields. Small shields are ideal for burying enemy attacks while great shields are superior in both physical and elemental damage negation, and medium shields are somewhere in the middle. The type will also determine which attacks will bounce off your shield and briefly stun your enemy. Although great shields can be used to bury, they will bounce off most enemies' attacks while interrupting them, giving you an excellent opportunity to deliver a guard counter attack. Guard counter is a devastating thrust attack that you can perform immediately after blocking any attack and pressing the heavy attack button. It deals a great amount of poise damage to your target and potentially breaks their stance, leaving them open for a critical strike. There is a sound indication when you have successfully performed a guard counter. It is important to point out that heavy weapons like great spears will break enemies' stance more effectively than normal spears, but they attack at a noticeably slower rate. The second important thing to know about shields is how much damage negation they offer against physical and other elemental types of damage. Having a 100% physical damage negation, for example, means you will suffer no damage from any physical attack while blocking with your shield. However, you can change the affinity of your shield in doing so, you will increase while simultaneously decreasing other types of damage negation on your shield. You can use this method to counter certain types of damage like fire or holy from any boss fight, but unless you know exactly what you are doing, I'll simply suggest leaving the shield affinity to standard, because manipulating your shield affinity will not only harm the other types of damage negation on your shield, but will also decrease your shield guard boost. Guard boost is a very important attribute on your shield. It determines how much stamina it costs to block an enemy's attack with that shield. Achieving a 100% guard boost will eliminate the stamina consumption from blocking any attack. It is possible to achieve such results through different methods like the Barricade Shield Ash of War or Shield Grease Consumable, but the most practical method is to simply use the Scholar's Shield Sorcery not only to achieve the 100% guard boost and remove the stamina consumption from blocking, but it also greatly increases the magic damage negation as well as improving other types of damage negation on your shield. It also has a longer duration than the barricade shield and doesn't require farming any materials like the shield grease. You can obtain the scholar's shield from the sorcerer's salon very early in the game over here on the map. The fingerprint stone shield without a doubt is the best great shield in Elden Ring. It has a 100% physical damage reduction as well as some of the highest resistances to other types of damage compared to any other shield. It is important to note when fully upgraded, the fingerprint shield has the highest guard boost attribute in the entire game. I would like to point out that the fingerprint shield can achieve the 100% guard boost by simply using the Scholar's Shield Sorcery alone. Another good shield you can obtain early on is the Golden Great Shield. You can farm this one from the Linden Knight patrolling south of Artist Shack in Lorania of the Lakes over here on the map. However, if you don't have time to farm, you can simply buy the Distinguished Great Shield from the vendor at the Hermit Merchant's Shack in the Altus Plateau region over here on the map. Keep in mind 
that only the Golden Great Shield can reach the 100% guard boost, similar to the Fingerprint Shield, and only by using the Barricade Shield Ash of War. But you can simply use the Scholar's Shield Sorcery, along with the Great Shield Talisman, to greatly increase your guard boost until you obtain the Fingerprint Shield. The ideal weapon type for this build is either Spear, Great Spear, or Heavy Thrusting Sword. Because you can use your light attacks from any of these weapons while simultaneously blocking with your shield. I will recommend either the Cross Naginata or the Lance weapon, mainly because you can obtain either of these weapons very early in the game and without having to go through any difficult encounters. I was constantly changing my weapon Ash of War as well as Affinity to easily overcome any challenging encounter. For the majority of the time, I was using the Cross Sanginata with the Sebuku Ash of War and the Arcane Affinity. But a very good replacement option will be the Flame of the Red Mains and the Ice Spear. Not only you can obtain both of these Ashes of War very early in the game, but they also deal a tremendous amount of poise damage to any enemy. Ice Spear in particular will also inflict Frostbite, causing the target to suffer 20% more damage from all sources for 30 seconds. Another great weapon you should try to obtain for your late game is Mogwin's Sacred Spear. It can be used to attack while guarding, similar to our previous examples, and provide the devastating AoE damage that this build badly lacks. Make sure you are using the No Skill Ash of War with the standard affinity on your shield, so you can use the Ashes of War on your weapons without having to put the shield away or two-handing your weapon. Let's take a look at how to build our character from the very start. My class here is the Vagabond and my level is 150. I'm counting that you are using Dardagon's Sword Seal until level 120 to easily match the requirements for this build. Here are our stats at level 50 and here are our stats at level 100. From level 100, I'll simply work on removing the Radagon Talisman and adjust the stats accordingly. And here is our final stats at level 150. For the gear, I was using the 3 Central Helm, Rotten Gravekeeper Clock, Guarding Bracers, and Old Sorcerer's Leg Wraps. And since there is a bleed effect involved, you can obviously use the White Mask for more damage. Another good armor to use for this build is the Full Duelist Set. It draws the attention of the nearby enemies towards you and not your group. The Shabriri's Woe Talisman does provide a similar effect. Our Talismans are the Green Turtle Talisman to greatly enhance our stamina recovery speed. The Spear Talisman will increase our weapon counter attack damage by 15%. This applies when dealing damage with a thrusting weapon like a spear to enemies during their attack animation. Lord of Blood's Exaltation increases our damage by 20% when there is a blood loss in the vicinity. Air Tree's Favor plus 2 will increase our maximum HP, stamina, and equipment load. Another good talisman you can use is the Curved Sword Talisman. It increases the guard counter attacks by 20%. For the early game, you should use Radagon's Sword Seal Talisman along with the Great Shield Talisman. For the Flask of Wondrous Physic, I was using the Green Purse Crystal Tear to improve my summon recovery speed. The effect seems to stack up with the Green Turtle Talisman effect, and together you likely won't even need to lower your shield to generate your summon quickly. Stone Barb Crack Tear will enable us to break enemy stance a lot easier. In the end, I would like to say that tank is a great build to play, especially for new players. It will introduce you to numerous mechanics in the game, like managing your stamina, which is very important for this build, since you can accidentally shield break yourself by depleting your stamina while you continue to attack. Also, keep in mind that mindlessly blocking is not always an option. Some enemies and bosses have a special grab moves that would completely ignore your defensive sense. I tried to provide you with as many early game options as well as character progression 
so you can start playing this build from the very beginning of the game. But if you can think of more ideas to help improve this build, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.